When he came to power, Rajiv Gandhi provided a new face to Indian politics. In the first two years after taking office as Prime Minister, he was heralded as Mr. Clean, a welcome change from the corrupt old deal-making politicians. But his image was shattered when controversy broke over the purchase of the 155mm howitzer guns for the Indian Army and his own minister rebelled and took up cudgels against him. How did the drama unfold and why did the Beaufort's gun deal seal Rajiv Gandhi's political fate? On the 16th of April 1987, a Swedish radio broadcast alleged that arms manufacturer Bofors AB of Sweden had paid 64 crore rupees in kickbacks in the 1,437 crore rupee deal to purchase 420 guns. The contract with Bofors AB had been signed in March 1986 by the Rajiv Gandhi government in India. To understand how the drama unfolded, we have to rewind to the start of the year 1987. The year had started with Rajiv Gandhi removing VP Singh as his finance minister. This is because Rajiv had received numerous complaints from industrialists and his friends about Singh's raid Raj. The finance ministry under VP Singh had been on an overdrive, conducting a series of inquiries followed by raids into alleged foreign exchange violations by big names including Reliance Industries and Ajitab Bachchan, brother of actor Amitabh Bachchan, then one of Rajiv's closest friends. VP Singh was moved to the Defence Ministry where he became an even bigger problem for Rajiv. But there was trouble around the corner. In April 1987, allegations of corruption surfaced in the purchase of HDW submarines from West Germany. The Indian Embassy in Bonn sent a telegram informing Singh about 30 crore rupees in kickbacks had been paid to middlemen in the purchase of these submarines. Rajiv scoffed at Singh's suggestion that the German company be asked to reveal the names of these middlemen. Frustrated by Rajiv's attitude, Singh ordered an inquiry into the deal and resigned from the cabinet on the 12th of April 1987. There was more to come. That same month, a Swedish radio broadcast claimed that commissions had been paid in the deal to purchase Bofors guns. The story was the same, kickbacks, but this time it was double the amount. On the 20th of April 1987, Rajiv told Parliament that there were no middlemen or kickbacks in the deal. But he was embarrassed when two of India's leading newspapers published a series of reports showing that middlemen had indeed made money from the lucrative Bofors contract. Under opposition pressure to come clean, Rajiv set up a joint parliamentary committee or JPC headed by senior Congress leader B. Shankaranand to investigate the deal. However, opposition political parties got only six of the 30 seats on the committee, making them allege that the JPC was a cover-up exercise. They boycotted the committee. As expected, the JPC gave a clean chit to the government, but the media's painstaking investigations and the opposition's onslaught kept Rajiv under pressure. Further revelations came with the publication of the diary entries of Bofors' chief, A. B. Martin Abdo, in 1987. Abdo had referred to various code names for people allegedly linked to the deal. There was GPH, ostensibly for GP Hinduja, N for Arun Nehru, Q for Otavio Kotrochi, and R for Rajiv Gandhi revealing the identities of people allegedly involved in the scam. The Hinduja brothers, who are London-based industrialists, were close to Indian political leaders and were reported to have received kickbacks in the HDW submarine deal as well. Arun Nehru, a cousin and advisor of Rajiv, was a powerful minister in the government. Kotrochi was a Delhi-based representative of an Italian company most importantly, he was a close friend of Rajiv and his wife, Sonia. 
A Swedish audit bureau report also confirmed that Bofors had deposited 64 crore rupees in various bank accounts linked to the Hinduja brothers. Win Chadda, the Bofors agent in India, and AE Services, a shell company operated by Kotrochi, in a tax haven. But Rajiv Gandhi continued to stonewall the demand for further inquiries. And this led to the ouster of his government and him as Prime Minister. The Bofors scam continued to grab headlines all the way till 2013 when the main accused Otavio Kotrochi died in London.